Welcome to Managing Asia. I'm Cody and Joji in Tokyo. In 30 years, Tadashi Yanai has shot from being the owner of one store to retail legend. He's built Japan's largest apparel empire and has plans to dominate the world. Today, we meet the winner of CNBC's ABLA Lifetime Achievement Award, Tadashi Yanai of Fast Retailing. For Tadashi Yanai, this is the culmination of his life's work. Thank you very much. He turned fast retailing into a household name in Japan, took the affordable apparel market in Asia by storm, and is now out to conquer the world. Globalization is a destiny if uh, you want to uh, succeed your business. Yeah, thank you. I met Yanai in his office for insights driving Japan's richest man. From pop stars to athletes, the signatures that adorn his walls show the breadth of Yanai's influence and how far he's come from starting out at his father's business in Yamaguchi Prefecture. Humble roots, but he dreamed big. In 1984, he opened his own shop called Unique Clothing Warehouse, the origin of Uniqlo today. He found his niche in affordable apparel. The mantra back then was go west to America, the land of riches many of his generation aspired to as Japan emerged from the ashes of war. This is a, a very famous, uh, maybe a Chrysler building. Chrysler building. Yeah. yeah. Also, I look at this one. Yeah. What is 3D this one? all time. 3D oh, movie. Oh, I see. The watching yeah, scene. Yeah, 1950. Because uh, uh, our age are uh, born in mm. occupied Japan yes. by USA. Right. And uh, American culture mm -hmm. uh, rushed into uh, uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. So, so many TV programs, mm. uh, Rami, uh, Disney, mm -hmm. or uh, Rawhide. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I have a some American dream. Mm -hmm. A dream that has pushed him to the big leagues since the last time we spoke on Managing Asia six years ago. Mm -hmm. The difference is that back then we were focused solely on Asia. Today, the buzzword is globalization. Barely a week goes by without a new overseas store opening. In a few months, fast retailing will have more stores outside than in its home market. To accelerate the drive, he's partnering beyond the traditional fashion sphere, like in Shanghai with Disney, all in an effort to triple sales to 5 trillion yen by 2020 and become the biggest apparel empire on earth. Like any company in the world today, I think the challenge is to deal with the following two trends. First, the fact that globalization has entered the real world, and the other is digitization. I believe whoever manages to adapt to these two things will become the winner. This is the biggest challenge. Until very recently, fast retailing sales has been on a straight path up. Revenues exceeded 13 billion U.S. dollars last fiscal year, fueled by strong demand in China, Hong Kong and Taiwan. Japan's largest retail company seems to be cut from a different cloth. While the competition is struggling to remain profitable, fast retailing, which owns Uniqlo, has been bucking the trend. But can it continue to stay fashionable? Fast retailing missed its last annual profit targets, a rarity that started to raise questions about the pace of its growth. With so much vested in China, the recent troubles facing China's economic growth have added to the uncertainty. You were recently in Shanghai for uh -huh. the opening of the store within the store yeah, yeah. with uh, Walt Disney. Yeah. Everybody in the world is concerned uh. about the slowdown in China. Mm -hmm. What are your impressions? I'm not at all concerned, whether it's short term, mid term or long term. However, I think there are economic challenges. But if they are to transform itself from an export-led, manufacturing-based economy to a consumer-led economy, if they are to elevate the standard of living, if the middle class is to expand, I believe these are the necessary changes that come with these things. The fact that they have a population of 1.3 billion, that's US and Europe combined. This is an incredible opportunity. How long do you think this rebalancing in China is going to take? 
Ah, so I don't know. That I don't know. But if China's economy were to collapse today, it will be a major problem. It may trigger a global Great Depression, but the world is going to come together and cooperate in order to prevent that from happening. So you see no impact on your sales in China in recent weeks yeah, yeah, as a result? None at all. In fact, it's getting better. But sales at home have skidded lower. Group sales in Japan tumbled 11.7 percent in June, its biggest drop in the last two years. Can I ask about your overall business performance over mm. the last three months? Mm -hmm. uh, some people are worried. Mm -hmm. Are you worried? Mm. These past three months haven't fared so well. Part of it had to do with us and partly the weather. There were many factors, but we now understand very clearly what caused this, so things will begin to improve. What was the main reason? Well, the main cause was that the performance of the first three months of this semi-annual period was too good, and the SKU management of our products, or the introduction of new products, were insufficient. So this is a logistics thing? Logistics, logistics, planning for new products, and SKU management. I think these three were the main factors. How do you improve that? By meeting of all those targets. For instance, this is something that only applies to Japan domestically. But we are rebuilding all of our distribution centers, and this will be completed soon. Also, our transportation from abroad and distribution centers will all be revamped. We will also make our SKU management much more clear to keep track of each individual stock-keeping unit. We will also introduce new ideas towards the end of the season. Rising prices could also be putting a dampener on sales in Japan. Uniqlo has raised prices again this year, following about a 5 percent across-the-board increase in retail prices a year ago. You're raising prices mm -hmm. at your stores yeah. again yeah. this year. Um, They've been gradually going uh, up. Yeah. Is this in response uh -huh. to weaker yen? Uh -huh. Or is it a bigger uh -huh. branding change for fast retailing? Uh, uh, this is solely due to the exchange rate. The fact that it went up from 80 yen to 120 yen, that means the yen has devalued by 66%. And this is true for anyone. No matter how hard you try selling the same product, you can't sell at the same price. If we tried to sell at the same price, the quality would be reduced. So to avoid that, we raise the price just a little. We do want to do our best and try and suppress the price hike, but a 34% increase means most likely a 10 to 15% price hike. We believe the prices were raised to an absolute minimum required level. Are you asking suppliers, for example, in China, uh -huh. who manufacture your mm -hmm. products because mm -hmm. of the devaluation uh -huh. of the yuan uh -huh. to lower prices to uh -huh. offset some of this price increase? Yeah, mother, no. It was just devalued very recently, so this is something we will start negotiating. We haven't been negotiating based on the yuan, it's all been based on a dollar settlement, so I don't think there will hardly be any effect. So there will be no pressure on the suppliers to reduce prices as a result of the yuan devaluation? Yeah, that's correct. Because we are paying them in US dollars, they are benefiting from this. Maybe you can say we were asking them to return some of what they have gained. In spite of the weekend and rising import costs, overseas sales is expected to keep boosting its bottom line and help Yanai achieve his goal of $5 trillion in the next five years. So in terms of location, is it still China, China, and China? I don't know. No, no, no. We will replicate the success we had in China in neighboring countries, in Europe and in the United States. And we will also implement what was successful in Japan in China, Europe, the United States, and in Asia. Stay with us. Uniqlo may be upping its fashion game, but is it going up market? More with Tadashi Yanai, the CEO of Fast Retailing, after this break.